work in a hospital? Yes. Could you wait for the next elevator? I appreciate you. Oh well. Hey there lovely person watching YouTube, welcome back. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ajay, I'm a doctor from Bangalore, India. A lot of you, I want to say a lot of you, but just one person asked for my reaction to The Good Doctor Season 4, Episode 1, which is the COVID episode. So here is me, a regular everyday doctor, reacting to The Good Doctor. Let's go. Those were really bad times. I mean, we right kind of still are. <laughs> That's never good. Okay, they're actually show showing the droplets pretty well. Uh, we actually have cameras that we can use to see droplets like that. And droplets spread the virus, blah, blah, blah. You know all that. So I'm going to skip that part. I'm so sorry. It's okay. So contact, you know, droplets on the hand, and then you touch the note, and there you go. Thank you. You did the person. Thank you very much. You guys probably know much more about this than I do. Your temperature is almost 101. Your other symptoms? First, it was a sore throat. Then my body started aching. <laughs> and then there's this cough. I even had my flu shot. Unfortunately, influenza is constantly mutating. The shot always lags behind. Yeah, so this is the thing about the influenza vaccine, um, the flu shot, basically. So people living in colder climates where uh, influenza, you know, outbreaks happen quite regularly, they need to take flu shots every year. But the thing about the influenza virus is that it keeps mutating constantly. So the flu shot you take is not going to protect you 100% from the flu, but it decreases severity of the flu if it, you know, occurs. So the COVID vaccines are also expected to work the same way. That is, it might not prevent disease from happening, but it will reduce the severity of the disease. And the coronavirus is not mutating as often as influenza virus does. But we have seen mutations like the one in uh, UK, the one in uh, South Africa. Mutations do happen, but we can tweak the vaccine according to the mutations. It might take some time, but it'll happen. So nothing to worry. Hopefully you'll recover faster because of it. <laughs> My daughter is very worried that I might have this virus from China. What's it called? Have you been to China or been around anyone who's been to China recently? Taken any cruises? The coronavirus doesn't cause sore throats. <laughs> this is a bad case of the flu. Go home, rest, drink plenty of fluids. You'll be fine in a week or two. I don't know. Did we initially think that uh, coronavirus doesn't cause uh, sore throat? Because it's a low respiratory tract infection as well. Basically a respiratory tract infection. So it is one of the symptoms. I don't know why she is saying um, that it doesn't cause sore throat. I don't know who came with this idea. <coughs> That's when it got really bad. The virus has damaged your mother's lungs. Her body is working harder and harder to breathe, but her blood oxygen levels continue to drop. She definitely has corona. We're doing everything we can to help her. Why, why are the doctors here wearing surgical masks and not N95 masks? I mean, if it's a known case of corona, you have to wear an N95 mask when you're treating the patient, right? It's not about the doctor's safety. Uh, these doctors are young, so they can relatively, you know, fight it off easily. But if they get infected, they're going to give it to other patients. Doctors will be dealing with old people, immunosuppressed people, people with different kinds of diseases like cancers and all that. So protecting yourself as a doctor is also quite important. The story about a real battle is still being fought. Uh, the heroes, doctors, nurses and other frontline workers, many of whom have given their lives. Do your part, wear a mask. You have COVID-19. But you haven't tested me. Your chest x-ray suggests growing glass opacities. That's COVID. I don't need a test, which is good because we don't have any. But I can't smell. I've been reading about it and that's not a symptom. I guess it is now. So in the beginning, we didn't have really good tests. So a lot of people, we did CT scans of the chest that would show ground glass opacities, like he said, and uh, that would mean that there's inflammation in the lung and the most common cause of inflammation around that point is COVID. So we would make diagnosis that way. 
and probably back then we didn't know that uh, it causes you know like loss of uh, smell and taste sensations but this is quite common in a lot of uh, you know respiratory viruses like adenoviruses and other coronaviruses when you get a cold you lose that sense of smell and taste right so it happens quite commonly i don't know why they're mentioning that maybe it was not like clearly known back then uh, but yeah like you could make a diagnosis like this covid okay now what now you go home <laughs> that's it that's it there's no treatment stay away from well, people yeah. come back if you have trouble breathing goodbye this is one thing i don't like about um, some medical tv shows it is that they try to bring in everything that is uh, relevant and interesting happening around into the show somehow right i mean uh, i can't i can't blame them this is how uh, show business works you have to keep it interesting but the thing here is um dr sean dr brown these are surgery residents and they would be seeing covid cases covid cases will be seen by internists pulmonologists and intensivists only when the hospital is overburdened and overstretched and these internists and uh, pulmonologists are not able to take care of the covid cases that's when other department doctors like surgeons and you know like orthopedicians and others come in just as like support supporting actors right they don't do diagnosis they don't decide treatment plans they just follow the orders of the intensivists they they are like support actors but again this is a tv show and they have to make it uh, like this but a tv show like scrubs would have probably gotten this better because uh, the lead characters one is a internist and another is a surgeon so they can divide cases properly but hey uh, this is like i said it's a tv show so it's all for entertainment do you feel shortness of breath a little if i'm sick is my baby sick this disease doesn't really seem to affect children or babies like it does yeah. adults should we admit her so uh, about her questions um first thing she is at a higher risk for complications from covid because pregnancy is a relative immunodeficiency state so she can have more complications but thankfully we have not been seeing this quite often um, maybe it's because uh, pregnant women are more likely to take extra precautions to prevent catching covid maybe this immuno depression doesn't affect covid like the way we thought but we are not seeing this as much as we thought it would be second thing about her concerns about her baby catching covid this is another positive thing that we've had from covid and that is that it doesn't affect babies the way it affects adults we've seen babies being born to covid positive mothers this positive for covid but they have no symptoms at all they're completely fine we've seen babies with you know severe congenital heart defects have covid and they do just fine so that's one silver lining probably safer at home once at home do you have a support system can anyone come good question in case you get worse very good question just me and the little one so these are the kind of questions that we ask patients ideally to make sure that they can take care of themselves once they get back home get her a room start on oxygen via nasal cannula and let's try some vancomycin and cefepim so vancomycin and cefepim are antibiotics since we didn't know much about the disease we wanted to just prevent the bacterial infections which are the things that kill a lot of patients with viral infections so someone with a viral infection are more prone to get bacterial infections over that and this kills more than this so we want to prevent this from killing the person so we used to give them antibiotics we still give them antibiotics and it actually works hey mia i'm not headed back there today or this week i found a temporary place here there are hospitals in phoenix too if i come home do you want me living with you of course that's the point every night after 12 hours of covid patients to hang out with you and kellen and his asthma Another positive thing that we noticed is that uh, covid doesn't affect asthma patients the way we thought it would we thought these people would be more uh, prone to severe covid disease but it's not the case so that's another silver lining what's going on her mother's oxygen saturation has gotten critically low we need to get her on a ventilator and that'll help her get better it'll keep her alive hopefully long enough for her body to fight off the virus is it dangerous more for us If you're curious why they're wearing that huge hazmat suit kind of a thing that is because to put a patient on a ventilator you have to first intubate them that is put a tube down their throat so you can connect the ventilator machine but when you do this it produces a lot of aerosols and these aerosols can cause a severe uh, covid infection in the person doing it so the doctors can catch the aerosols uh, breathe it in and cause severe covid disease so that's why all the extra precautions She's out 
you sedate the patient before you it's put the swelling. tube in because obviously it's very uncomfortable you know having a pipe down your throat slow you want this over with as soon as possible but you also don't want her to call yeah her technique is not 100% perfect but i'm not perfect either so i'm not going to preach That feeling when you first get a tube into someone's throat is amazing. You literally know that you directly saved someone's life and it feels really good. <coughs> they told you not to come back unless your breathing got worse. Between the fever and the cough, he's barely sleeping. Who said that? <sighs> My wife wanted to come with me, but she has to work. She's essential personnel. He's lost 10 pounds. Breathe. Please don't talk. Don't disturb when someone's auscultating. That's really rude. And you can't basically listen to anything. So, fireworks. I love this. Someone's bursting firecrackers because I got to 2,000 subs. So sorry. I'm a wife who's worried about her husband. Forgive me. I'm I'm evil. It's lucky that you're so irritating. What? Your husband's blood oxygen level is dangerously low. That that can't that can't be. I mean, I don't I don't feel that bad. I, not great, but my breathing. That's interesting. You don't feel bad, but you are. Hmm. Admit him to the COVID floor. Start heated, humidified, high flow nasal cannula at 8 lpm. <coughs> okay, so this is another peculiar phenomenon seen in COVID. This is called happy hypoxia. Usually in respiratory infections, if the oxygen saturation, that is the blood oxygen level, becomes low, the person becomes you know deeply distressed and. things like that but in covid what happens is even with a low oxygen level the person feels absolutely fine like absolutely fine that's why it's called happy hypoxia they'll be walking around they'll be running around and suddenly the oxygen level goes so low that they collapse i actually made a video about this long back i'll link it up here you can watch it later her crp esr ferritin d dimer transaminase and il6 are all way up these are all the Try tests we've done the zone i read in my online physicians group that the uk's had some success with that So the Oxford University ran a trial uh, using dexamethasone as a treatment protocol for uh, severe covid infections people who are on ventilators what happens in covid is that uh, the immune response to the virus is so huge that it starts dots What happens in covid is that the immune response from the body against the virus is so huge that our own body cells get affected because of this. So dexamethasone is a steroid which reduces inflammation on the whole. So you give that inflammation reduces patient feels better. Of course I've spoken about it in another video. Look it up here. Should we intubate him? Not yet. Not a minute before we need to. His oxygen saturation has been dropping steadily. It's 74 now. At this rate we're going to prone him. But in yours as it helps. sometimes yeah so basically putting the patient in the prone position will let the lower lobes of the lung expand so that the patient can take more air in so they can you know oxygenate better i actually dealt with it in this video again i'll link it up and you can watch it later ooh is that a porsche 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 that prone sit right it's a sweet car car goal some day Oh, is living in his garage. Yeah, this is another sad thing that we noticed in the COVID pandemic, and that is uh, healthcare workers had to stay away from their families. Our doctor here in India lived in his car for a long time because he didn't want to go home and infect uh, his family members. A lot of sacrifices had to be done. <gasps> Your lungs are filling with fluid and secretions. Suction catheter, please. <gasps> What do we listen with? I guess so. I don't know. It keeps changing, probably in combination with the bacterial pneumonia he's developed. <laughs> That is what I said. Uh, that's what I previously mentioned. A uh, viral infection makes the person more susceptible for a bacterial infection, and sometimes the bacterial infection is the one that actually kills the person. Mm-hmm. 
Martin has a heart murmur. What? Martin, Martin. Hello, I'm glad you're awake. You may have a bacterial abscess on your heart valve. That sounds really bad. It is. COVID's complications are not at all consistent. It's becoming annoying. I'll tell you more on the way to the procedure. So what he's saying is that there could be bacterial infection of the valve leaflets in the heart. This is what we call endocarditis. I mean, a new onset murmur is suggestive, highly suggestive of endocarditis, but you don't take someone up for a procedure without doing an echocardiogram, but maybe he's taking him for an echocardiogram. So let's see. ECMO isn't working for her. She's pulsing yeah, speed yeah. Epi in the crash car. Pushing epi. Epinephrine is basically adrenaline. It, uh, you know, helps with the heart rate and stuff. Basically helps in the resuscitation. And a crash cart is that cart that you have in a hospital next to every bed that has all these emergency medications that would be needed in a situation like this. One hundred and twenty joules, clear. Vfib now. Pushing amiodarone, three hundred and. Amiodarone is uh... clear. Amiodarone is an anti-arrhythmic agent. We use it when there is, you know apparent uh, electrical activity happening in the heart and these chest compressions have got to be the most uh, how do you call it like the most useless chest compressions i have seen you have to use the whole weight of your upper body and you have to push the chest wall like at least five centimeters deep how professors teach us in med school is that when you give chest compression you should break a rib that's how strong it should be otherwise you won't be able to you know pump the heart actually a certain youtube doctor would be really pissed if he sees this kind of chest compressions i'm not gonna mention who that is you all know who that is i feel the rump apply the pressure there now just the cesarean section need for need this baby out now covid positive pregnant lady baby's out how's she looking dr park good she's pink active I'm breathing great. So that's a baby warmer. So basically, once the baby is born, it's going to lose heat really fast. So I have to put it under a warmer. And I still remember the first delivery I conducted. It was a girl baby, and I've conducted over 15 deliveries. Hashtag Saddleflex. But the first one will always be special. Here's a picture. You'll be fine. Lily. Most people who go on a ventilator <laughs> don't come off it's actually true at least in the initial uh, what the doctor time of the pandemic so what we noticed initially is that we were trying to put the patients on ventilators quite early on so we because we thought that giving them extra oxygen is going to help them you know like get more oxygen into the body basically we thought this way because of our experience with other similar viruses like the influenza virus the sars virus etc but it later turned out that early ventilation is not a really great thing to do so now we try to push you know putting the patient on a ventilator as late as possible only if it gets really bad we try to put them on a ventilator so we are learning new things every day and the treatment management is getting better and better that's why we are seeing less and less people die of covid all right that was it i hope you liked it if you liked make sure you give it a huge thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon next to it so you get a notification on your phone or on your mobile or on your ipad or whatever every time i upload a video you shouldn't miss that if you like this video i think you'll like this video as well so make sure you watch that and as always stay happy and healthy and i'll see you in the next video Could you please? Wear your damn mask.